On behalf of all assembled here today, I should now like to invite our newest alumnus, Dr. Kerry Rowe, to address convocation. Chancellor Cowan, President Chakma, distinguished guests, faculty, proud parents, family, friends, and especially the graduating class of 2016. I very sincerely congratulate you on your success. But while your graduation today is a reflection of your intelligence and hard work, no doubt it wouldn't have happened without the support of family and friends. Certainly that is true in my case. And I'd like to express our collective thanks to everyone who's provided support to those graduating today. My comments will focus on two topics, opportunities and people. As graduates of one of Canada's leading universities, an exciting career lies ahead of you, but in many cases, it may not follow the path that you expect. When I graduated, I never in my wildest dreams thought that I have so many wonderful opportunities to work in a professional capacity all around the world. Indeed, when a mentor first suggested I apply for a position at the University of Western Ontario, I'd never been outside Australia. I recall my wife and I looking at a map of Ontario, searching for London. Thinking that the name must be a clue, we started at the Manitoba, Ontario border. I came to Weston as a 27-year-old assistant professor to obtain international experience working as a colleague with a world-renowned geotechnical engineer, Dr. K.Y. Lowe, who's with us today. However, what I did not expect when I arrived here in late 1978 were the questions arising from the evacuation of hundreds of people from their home that had recently occurred in Niagara Falls, New York. But thanks to the confluence of opportunities afforded by a new and topical issue, and the presence here of the late Dr. R. M. Quigley, who was a pioneer in monitoring waste dumps, we combined our skills and had the opportunity of being at the forefront of developing a new discipline. This recognition of and seizing of an unexpected opportunity has allowed me to provide input to geoenvironmental projects around the world. You too are entering a world full of enormous opportunity. The moral of my story is to keep your eye open for opportunity and be prepared to undertake new challenges. Whether in engineering or dentistry, you have learnt many technical skills, some of which you may use, some you may not. However, there are many non-technical skills that will certainly be needed. Success in the professions is almost never the result of individuals working alone. Any impact my work has had was only partly due to work I did myself. In large part, it is recognition of my colleagues and students working as a team. I'm fortunate to have had wonderful mentoring, friendship and support from a large number of people, many of whom were never directly involved in what I was doing, but who nevertheless greatly influenced its success. And some of those people are here today. One of those mentors, Bruce Rodway, was my first supervisor in my first job after I completed my engineering degree. As Mike mentioned, I was employed by a government department responsible for building public structures in Australia. And one of the many valuable things Bruce said to me in my first year was, Kerry, I see you have A's in your university courses. Now you have to get an A in people management. 
and he made me responsible for managing drillers twice my age. They must have been in their mid-40s, but to a 23-year-old who's just graduated, they seem terribly old. Effectively working with and managing people is an essential key to success. This can be especially challenging when you, as many of you soon will, need to manage people who have been doing things a certain way for many years and you want them to do it differently. In dealing with this, I learned four things at the time that have served me very well over the years. They are as simple as they are difficult. Listen, consult, explain, and genuinely care about the people with whom you work. Before attempting to initiate change, first listen and learn what you can from all those with whom you work, but especially those you supervise. Understand the strengths and weaknesses from listening and learning. When you make a proposal for change, genuinely consult to see if they can improve on what you're proposing. Understand their concerns and reservations. When you make a decision, explain why you have ultimately decided that something needs to be done a certain way and how it will lead to better results. Provide encouragement for them to help refine and take pride in what they do. I have spoken about how you can bring out the best in people with whom you work. There can be severe consequences when these issues are not handled correctly. For example, when one looks at engineering failures, one finds they usually involve several things going wrong. But in the majority of cases, these include one or more non-technical issue, such as poor communications, poor management, poor documentation, or poor decisions. Sadly, many poor decisions are made in the interest of saving money. And I'd like to conclude by illustrating how costly such decisions can be. In 2008, I was appointed to a three-person international team to investigate the escape of explosive concentrations of methane gas from a waste dump that had forced more than 200 people from their homes. There were several factors contributing to this failure. However, a key factor was a conscious decision not to spend $500,000 needed to properly line the sand pit that was going to be used to dispose of waste. This decision was made despite the fact that research had shown how critical a liner is to minimizing the risk of a landfill, and despite a recommendation being made to do so in this particular case. Luckily, no deaths occurred, but it was pure luck. In addition to the inconvenience and worry to residents, the cost of cleaning up the problem is now well over $100 million. Poor decisions can be made by very busy people who do not have enough time to fully investigate an issue and keep up to date with modern knowledge and practice. Experience is valuable, but so too is a young critical mind and the time to dig a little deeper. As a junior professional, I encourage you to use your critical thinking and your knowledge. And don't be afraid to question and to politely but clearly make your concerns known. If you can be convinced that you are wrong, then you will have learned something. But if you're right, you may have prevented a very expensive mistake. You're entering a very competitive and international world. It is a world where you can make a difference by using what you've learned at Western, together with the development of your ability to work with and manage people and to communicate clearly. I wish you all the very best 
as you embark upon your post-graduation journey. Thank you. <laughs>